Howdy folks, welcome to another new episode. Um, this episode we're going to do Morning Zen Part 1 eventually. Some Slayer grinding, we just got a new task for Dust Devils. But actually, I would like to get uh, my tuna potatoes out of the way. We made a couple hundred tuna potatoes many episodes ago and we're almost out, and I kind of just want to stop worrying about it or thinking about it. So I'm going to make a quick farm run to pick up um, all the corn that I have growing right now. And then we'll go ahead and cook all that corn, cook any of our remaining tuna. Uh, and I probably will have to take a break before we actually finish making the tuna potatoes. It takes quite a while. Uh, but we'll do all that. We'll bank all of it. Probably go do Morning Zen Part 1, and then we'll do the Dust Devil task or the other way around. So I'll uh, see you in a bit. I'm going to remember to bring my farmer shirt this time. I don't think the extra XP is worth the loss in energy, but whatever. Last time I was mass buying potatoes, I did not have sacks. I forgot that they were a thing. This is way faster. <laughs> way faster. Before I was just buying and then running to the bank. Let's never do it that way again. I need to math out how many sacks I should be carrying. I think I need to carry exactly as many sacks as will allow me to buy 10 potatoes at a time. I think that's right. So that means that. With gold in my inventory, I have 27 spaces remaining. I should take 17 sacks. I think that's correct. Okay, that is that is so much faster. <laughs> I was actually considering the time it took to get um, potatoes as being a very significant element of the total time to make tuna potatoes, but it is not that bad. Um, so we currently have 220, we're already halfway there. I gotta go, it's time for a stream, but uh, we'll wrap this up when I get back, finish making the tuna potatoes, and then we'll go to Morning's End Part 1 or Slayer, depending on what time it is when I start playing again. So we'll see you in a few seconds. Hey, hey, I'm back. It's a different day. Um, okay, so we're going to finish getting these potatoes. I'm going to finish making the tuna potatoes. Uh, I think before we do Morning's End Part 1 or Slayer Grinding, I would like to get at least start working on 72 mining. Uh, the reason for that is we can do Making Friends with My Arm, which seems like it's an advantageous quest to complete, and it's also not that hard compared to everything else that's on our plate. So if I can have that available... We can choose between doing that or Morning's End Part 2, which is super hard, or Taste of Hope, which is super hard. Uh, so yeah, let's finish these tuna potatoes. Let's run over to Motherload. Hopefully we can get close to the last piece of Prospector gear so we can never do Motherload ever again. Um, I mean, maybe we can use some of the stuff we get from Motherload to make cannonballs to speed up uh, Slayer a bit in the future. But uh, that'll be the short-term plan. I think we're going to end with Morning's End Part 1 instead of you know kicking it off right away. So I'll see you in a bit. So I need a little bit more corn to cook all of my tuna. So I'm gonna do a quick farming run just to grab a couple of those. God, I wish I knew about leprechauns noting your vegetables before. I really don't think the game ever tells you that that's a thing. It makes farming so much less miserable, especially doing runs between different locations. I thought you had to bank between every step and had to like fit everything in your inventory at once. <laughs>
Who knew it would take so long to cook 408 baked potatoes? Okay. Uh, we've got the requisite parts. Now we have to go to the culinaromancer's chest to do the rest of it. So, there real quick. Literally takes hours to make <laughs> a backup of um, uh, tuna potatoes, but I'm I'm very hopeful that this set of 400 tuna potatoes will last us until the quest cave. Because if it doesn't, I have to go fishing for tuna, and that's going to suck. So I really hope we don't have to do that. I actually burned through some of the tuna that we caught before, not knowing about this recipe. Just like, oh, I'll just you know, get some quick healing while I'm thieving. Deeply regret that. Okay, I think we have to make buttered potatoes first. It's kind of a pain. So, this is now the third round of tuna potatoes that I've made. And every time I'm like, man, that took longer than I expected. I'll have to remember that for next time. I, I did not remember it. Uh, it's been like almost three hours? I mean, you have to include the fact that I was gathering from farming and part of that, so that doesn't really count. But I think that the actual process of making 422 tuna potatoes from like possessing the raw ingredients to the tuna potatoes being done uh, was about three hours. Three or four. Let's see, hold on. I'm gonna, I, I need to do this math because now I'm interested. Let's, let's call it two hours and 15 minutes. I think that's fair. I'd say the rest of it was time spent farming. So it takes me three minutes per... That can't be right. But is it? Well, no, because I did have to. I had to gather all the potatoes in sacks. I had to cook all the potatoes. I had to cook all of the tuna. I had to cook all of the corn, and then I had to combine all the potatoes with butter. I think it is about three minutes per potato. Damn. All right. Well, my kitties are dying. They get fed in like thirty minutes, but I'll probably go feed them now just to calm them down. I'm gonna take a short break, and we'll come back and either do um, mining to try to get this close to 72, uh, or we'll start Morning's End Part 1, but the, the goal is to do Morning's End Part 1 before the episode's over. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. I did that math wrong. It couldn't possibly have been three minutes per potato. It's about three potatoes per minute. But that's still pretty brutal. 60 seconds, you can make one end product, and that doesn't include the time it took to get the tuna, or to, you know, gather the corn. Well, I am very hopeful that 422 tuna potatoes is going to last me until the quest cape, uh, because I don't want to fish for more tuna. <laughs> uh, that's 15, a little more than 15 full inventories of potatoes. I will try to use other foods whenever I'm doing something that doesn't strictly require the high healing of the tuna potato. Which means I should probably go ahead and cook these swordfish and these lobsters just so that I can burn through them before I burn through these. Uh, damn it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go do that just to get it out of the way while I'm, while I'm in the groove of cooking. Uh, and then I think we're going to pop over to Motherload Mine and, and try to wrap some of that up if we can. Thank you. 
Hey, cooking 76 without having done very much wine at all. We'll slightly reduce the number of wines we need to get to 90 cooking, which will happen eventually. Right before Song of the Elves. Okay, I finished cooking my lobster. So I have 422 tuna potatoes, 61 sharks, 117 swordfish, 308 lobsters, and I hope to try to use those depending on whatever task we're currently working on. I also have 3,236 jugs of wine, which I'm going to hold on to because there's a good chance I'll end up using them uh, for, like, if we need to get money for construction, we're probably going to have to do a lot of thieving. And it makes the most sense to burn those for thieving. But now it's time to go to the Motherload Mine for Foray. Um, try to start working on 72 mining, and I plan to get out of Motherload the instant we get the final Prospector piece. Uh, I think Prospector has been kind of a waste of time. Like, the total amount of XP savings it's going to provide is not worth the additional time it's taken to get it. But I had to learn that with, you know, one set of XP boosting gear. I don't think that the farmer's gear is a waste because Tithe Farm is actually pretty efficient XP per hour. It's just that Motherload is not. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and pop over there. I only need one more piece of uh, mining gear. Prospector, Prospector, Prospector. And let me think about or goals. I have 569 banked coal, 435 iron. So that's potentially a decent amount of cannonballs. I think cannonballs continue to be my main focus. I need to get smithing to 65 to qualify for another quest that's not super difficult. Um, and it's probably going to involve me buying gold ore again from Yatis, so which is a nightmare, but what are we going to do, right? Tin Man. I asked for it. Alright, let's go. Mining 65, and I'll mine Lovakite. A little late. Oh, hey, we uh, didn't realize we were so close to this. We're level 1500 now, which means we have access to a couple new, probably low pop servers. Neat. Um, we need at least five more mining levels, possibly more. We need 72 for making friends with my arm, but we can boost into that, which I might want to do when we get to like 70 or something. Let me double check the money boots are. I've got that mature dwarven stout boost by two. It's the only one that I have. It would be difficult for me to make another one. I got it from that quest forever ago. We used one earlier for a boost, a smithing boost. Woof. Yeah. So it might need to get to 72 anyway, but we'll see. My rate of gold nuggets is really bad. Uh, we've done 251 pay dirt, and I've got two nuggets. Hopefully RNG comes around for me here. I want to be out of here. The cost is sunk, and I am not able to overcome the fallacy, even though I know it's a fallacy.
Hey, mining 66. I'm actually going to gather my pater real quick and then take a quick break. Do I have a ton of time left to do quest? Phone's blown up this morning. Yeah, I only have about two and a half hours left, so I'll probably get um, one more mining level. We'll go ahead and hit uh, 67, and then I'll go do Morning's End Part 1. It's going to be rough. Actually, I think the first part's not too bad, but Part 2 is supposed to be rough. Still not doing super great on Gold Nuggets. We're at 18. Out of 894 mined. Mining sucks. Stepping away for a bit. See you soon. And back. Uh, let's go ahead and finish 67 mining. Ugh. <laughs> I need like 60 nuggets to be able to get the stupid final piece of the prospector kit. So it's not going to happen. We might even finish the kit before we get to my uh, making friends with my arm quest requirement. Uh, I want to die. It's alright, I'm going to get some D&D &D work done in the meantime. Um, after this last round of fast forwarding, we'll go do Morning's End Part 1. All right, well, in positive news, I've been feeling silly about putting all this work into, um, wow, I'd start talking in a genie spawns, that's cool. I've been feeling silly about putting all this work into getting the Prospector Kit. I guess we need it for a hard diary, and it's feasible that I could actually do all the hard diaries after we finish Questcape. I don't think I've, I mean, I'll probably keep recording after Questcape, but it wouldn't be that much work beyond the Questcape requirements, and it would probably future-proof the account for requirements for future quests. They don't seem like they're going too high above 70 for the most part. Go ahead and burn this on herb lore. Back to mining. So the short version is it's not a complete waste, yay. Man, I am so dry on gold nuggets. It's not even funny. Uh, let's see, I've mined 1062. I should have 29 by now, and I have 19. So I should be halfway to the Prospector chest. I'm only a third of the way. And like, I wouldn't feel bad about that if I knew there was some kind of like pity mechanic that's checking, adjusting the drop rate based on how dry you are, but there's not. This isn't that kind of game. Woof. Oh shit, Morning Zen Part 1 requires magic logs, so I'm going to have to farm some implings for a bit. Uh, given that that's the case, and implings might take a while to farm, I might bail once I get 50% of the way to 67. We'll come back if we finish the quest and have time remaining, but that makes me concerned on total time. All right, that'll have to do for now. Uh, we're at 1,291 coal, 837 mithril, 283 gold, and I think 23 nuggets. Yeah, oof. No good. Um, all right, so we got to go do nature implings. I think I said eclectic implings earlier. Nature implings to get one magic log. Uh, get my stuff together to do that. I'm going to take a quick break before we officially start it. Implant jars. Perfect. Okay. I'll head over to where that is real quick. Zanaris.
Okie dokie, be back in a few seconds. Hey, I'm back, just had to start installing the game we're playing today. Uh, let's go ahead and catch some nature implings. You need to get one magic log, which isn't too bad. <laughs> Red spiky embraces. I'm going to be catching eclectics too because I need a second pair of blue uh, dragon hide pants for a um, hard clue stash. Hey, there's some magic logs. Whoops, I don't know how long I was unmuted there. Maybe I fast-forwarded through the clicking sounds. It's done. Get out of here now. Just gotta come back here for blue dehyde chaps. I think we need to get more, uh, like three more magic logs to finish the quest cape, if I recall correctly. Oh, I don't need to do it right now. All right, we're starting the quest now. Uh, there's going to be a enemy that spawns that reduces our stats, but I think we'll probably be fine in Graceful because it's like a level 11 enemy. I bought some food just in case. See what happens. I already did such so much damage in the first hit. Okay. Now I want to get my stats back. So I think we need to ring dueling. Bloody murder top. How do I wash blood states out? It's actually kind of funny. Like I think that's the one combat event in Warning Zen Part One, and then Warning Zen Part Two is you're just being harassed constantly by these like level seventy-ish enemies. So you bring a million prayer potions. I think is the way to deal with it. Go to Taverly. Okay. Barrel of Napta is like super heavy. Tegia doing laundry by the lake. I remember talking to this guy a long time ago. I forget which quest it was for. Doing laundry, eh? What's it to you? Nice day for it. I suppose it is. Do you have any way to remove blood stains? So I use can clean almost anything. Sounds like just a thing I need. Can I use some? No, I don't have much soap left. Still have lots to clean. Tell me where I can buy some? My own secret recipe. Could you be less helpful? Steal the soap from his laundry basket. No kidding. Alright, well I need inventory space then. Probably be stopping at a bank to get one of these things back later, right? Oh, where do I get bones? I don't need these bones, do I? I did not pick something up because of the bones. I'm suddenly concerned that I did. Gas mask, bloody mortar top, ripped mortar trousers, mortar boots, mortar gloves, mortar cloak, mortar letter. Where did this space come from? Oh, 8 for the 8th the inventory spaces to the soap. Okay, cool. That's lucky. Steal the soap. Nice. And the bucket of water wash the stains out. Do the top of scrub with the soap and rinse away the bloody suds with water. Hey. Can now wear the motor mortar top. Talk to the Elven seamstress and let you know. So one of the mourners are all secretly uh elves, which is kinda cool. Be concerned. This is if a very loose letter. Pass all entry requirements for the death card. Death card HQ. Let's 
talk to the seamstress along with that person. Can I help? Do you mend clothes? Even clothes are too hard to mend. It's not the finesse of elven garments. Do you repair some elven clothing as it goes? Let me take a look at it then. Disturbingly familiar. Disturbingly familiar about the design of these trousers. They're made for an elf. Can you fix them? Two pieces of silk and some beer. Ha, huh, it's almost like you knew what I needed. <laughs> I love when they have quest commentary on that. Alright, mourner trousers are equipped. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I want to have additional gear, apparently. Just the mourner. Toe crunchies. Buy dyes while you're in town. Red. Hello. Green. It's nice I don't have to make them. It was really annoying before when we had to make them. Your bank here is. Watch me not have access to it until after completing this quest. Grab some extra dyes just in case. We may have actually used this bank before. Come on. Oh, the bank's on the other side. Well, it's still. Wow, that is a hassle to get to. Can't bring this, this, this. This is Dunzo. Presumably don't need the soap anymore, so I'll just deposit it. That. Go buy some extra dye just in case. And go buy those Twig Crunchies real quick. More HQ, I think that this is. Good day. I need of assistance. I can I access the basement? Where is that? Oh, I see now. Let's climb up staircase. Where's climb down? Oh, there's a trapdoor. Gotcha. Oh, I need that rotten apple, don't I? I need it for later, I think. This one specifically, okay. Find Eslet, show him a letter. Cause these guys aggravate you if you aren't wearing the proper gear. Hello, I'm one of the new recruits. Well, I'm an Eslet in charge here. Let's have a look at your paperwork. Seems to be on order. Welcome to the Death Garden. For your first assignment, as you may know, part of what we do here is to keep the people believing in the plague. Didn't they tell you? I better fill you in. As you undoubtedly know, you're sitting here by Lord Jorworth to secure the city. The reason for this is so we can access the caves below. What's important about the caves? Mission's classified. Keep your presence in the city secret. Lord Yorworth arranged an alliance with King Lothus, the ruler in the east. Full things will help him dispose of the Knights of Camelot once their work here is done. Expect to be disappointed. The plague serves two purposes. First, it allows us to move around the city in secret thanks to our mortar disguises. Second, it means we can abduct citizens to mine the caves below with ease. Pretend they've fallen victim of the plague. Doesn't anyone suspect the truth? We've had a few near misses. We had some girl from East Arduin, and I remember her. Poking around asking too many questions. We locked her up. We managed to escape with the help of an adventurer. Who was that? They were so stupid we managed to use the adventure to deal with King Tyrus. It all worked quite well in the end. That is why I must ensure that people keep believing in the plague. One of the things we do to keep up the lie is a fool old farmer brumpty into believing his sheep are infected. Okay, man, that's just a random quest. 
This sheep are an abnormal color. They're ill with plague. It's amazing what a bit of dye could do. Dyed them? You don't think they end up with those ridiculous colors naturally, do you? Shame of it is we had to find a way to stop the dye from washing out, so we need someone that's one being you to go and re-dye them. You have a blue rinse to a load of old sheep. Sheep need to be dyed red, yellow, green, and blue. We're not... You cannot be seen doing this by anyone. You need to re-dye them the colors they already are, the farmer may notice the change. We have a gnome device that fires fat dye parcels that rupture on impact. A gnome inventor here too. Not being very helpful about fixing it. Oh, he's being tortured. Don't accidentally attack any of the warners. I might want to turn off left click attack just in case. Talk to Gnome on a rack. Let me fix this thing. Not helping you fix that. It hasn't caused enough trouble as it is. Friends have already tried every torture in the book. Tried stretching your eyelids? Yep, didn't work. Beating you nail and print stew? That's all I've been living on since I got here. So fire to your nostril pair? Let rabid rabbits nibble your toes? Giving you a twisted arm? I quite like the toe nibbling. <laughs> Extract your wisdom teeth? Gnomes aren't wise, so we don't get them. I used to play gnome ball as a kid. This is a walk in the park in comparison. <laughs> what will work, then? I think I'm stupid enough to tell you I've been craving toad crunchies and I can't stand having my feet tickled. Oh, okay. Just by my cooperation, you're a bigger imbecile than I thought. Alright, so I have to use the feather to tickle his feet. That's funny. Dangle the toad crunches above the gnome's nose just out of reach and hold the feather menacingly close to his feet. You help me? You prefer if I tickle your feet. Alright, alright, I'm beaten. Bring <laughs> me some soft leather and some magic logs and I'll see what I can do. I have all that here. Release. I need to let him up easy to fix the device. So now I'm having a magic log, soft leather, and the strange device along with some toad crunchies. Fix device. You can load ammo into the device before you can use it. Swamp toads. EKP. way to bring in another quest rate. Suck the blue dye into the bellows. That's so goofy. I love it. Makes sense. I wonder if you get explicit, explicit clues about the toads at any point. Blue toad, green toad, red toad. Hopefully I can do this on the first try, we'll see. Go north of Arduin on the colored sheep. There's a green sheep. Okay. Gonna equip the fixed device. So let's see. Use yellow or use green toad first. Put the dieful toad in the fitting firing chamber. Select the aim and fire mode from your combat options. Aim and fire. This is actually based on the way I'm facing. If so, that's super funny. I wonder how many of these they have in the game.
Nice. <laughs> oh, this game is wonderful. It's so good. Combat options. Aim and fire. I wonder how they're doing this, right? There we go. Oh shit. Oh no, it gave it to me. Thanks, game. Whew. Moved right as I fired. The red ones are near here, maybe? Look, this quest series is really serious, but, like, this part is very funny and goofy. Nice. One more. Red sheep. There's one. I know it's a little bit too close to the camera for my comfort. Alright, gave it to me. Nice. Make sure the quest shows that I did it. Use it to re dye the sheep. Sweet. So goofy, I love it. Yo! I am finished with those sheep. Good to see your enthusiasm. Let's get one of the others to do the job, and as you're here, it's been a while since anyone got ill from the plague. <laughs> you see to it that people do. The plague doesn't exist, how am I meant to do that? I've never tried this before, but some joker put something in our food not too long ago, which we did in Biohazard. It gave us all symptoms akin to those of a plague. To find out what it was that we were poisoned with, it reproduced the effects. Done right, the poison should not be fatal. It could help restock our dwindling supply of cheap flavor. And then have the infected citizens removed and sent into the mines. Distribution should be easy enough because of the city walls, no one can grow their own food. All the food comes here from one of our three supply points. Find out who poisoned you, find out what they poisoned you with, find out how to make that poison and then produce enough poison to affect a lot of people. Don't forget the part where you use the poison to contaminate the food supply. <laughs> Two of the three supply points should be enough. Who meant to do all of that? Seem resourceful. I'm sure I've up with something. Wait for me, I know a biologist nearby. Someone trustworthy? Oh, definitely. Cool. Back to Elena, who helped us poison in the first place. She was pretty great. I guess we need the nap the barrel here now. Which makes me very happy that we saved it forever ago. I think it was underground pass or something super stressful quest weight was a problem had to make extra barrels the barrels themselves were a problem because if you screwed them up you'd have to go back through the underground pass making extras is, is going to save us about 30 or 45 minutes here even though we don't have to go through the pass we can teleport there still will be a time saver hello again how dare you enter my house mourner get out me, no, I didn't recognize you in the morning here. It's a long story. It all started when I converted the king. He admitted the plague is a hoax. Turns out he was lying to me. So how we found out the plague was a hoax. When I got rid of the king, he told me he faked the plague to keep people safe from his brother, King Tyrus. He said Tyrus was taken by the Dark Lord while exploring the lands of the West. He claimed the Dark Lord corrupted him by forcing him to drink from the Chalice of Eternity. King's orders I traveled to the underground pass and into the western lands of Tyrannon. Met up with Lord Yorworth, the leader of some elves, he died of the king. The only king killed King Tyrus. That was when I discovered the truth. While returning to King Lothus, I was confronted by another elf named Arianwin, leader of a group of rebel elves opposing Lord Yorworth. 
the time I was carrying a letter from Lord Yorworth to King Lothus. He broke the seal and told me what it said. It's actually King Lothus and Lord Yorworth who serve the Dark Lord. According to the letter, King Lothus wants to reclaim Camelot from King Arthur and claims the Dark Lord can help him. Tardowin seems to be the key to his plan. So I met with Arianne when he uh, who revealed to me the mourners are actually elves and service to Lord Yorworth. Infiltrated the mourners, and I'm trying to work out what they're doing. Something important to them in the caves below West Arduin. That's quite the reveal. Hoping you could help me with something. An asked to produce a poison based on rotten apples. I feel like in uh, normal circumstances, the game would fade to black as you fill it in on what's going on, but because there's such a huge gap between when you're probably able to do mornings and part one and two, when you're able to do uh, what was it? Regicide? I'm glad that they have their recap. That any poison based solely on apples, rotten or not, would be very effective. Put a rotten apple in the mortar stew, I'm told the effect was much like the symptoms of a plague. You need to poison a large food supply in order to get the mortar's trust. That's awful, I can't help you with that. If they don't gain the trust of the mourners, and people who already went have a much worse time than affects the toxin. Better be right about this. Give me a sample of rotten apple to examine. Perfect. Let's see. Then just isolate a small sample of the toxin. It's a byproduct of the mold that grows on these apples. Not fatal, so we shouldn't need to counteract it. We're going to contaminate two of the three supply points in West Darwin. It's over half the food in the city. You need a huge amount of toxin. You're also going to need to refine it, too. Oh, the right equipment. Mash up a lot of rotten apples. You need to dissolve the toxin into a liquid that is a very low evaporation point. It's in form of solvent. An apple would be perfect. Chemist and Rumi can help me with that. Get some naphtha, mash rotten apples and mix them together. Once you've done that, straighten out any solids. Heat the mixture to evaporate off the solvent. I leave this to straighten out the solids. Check out the orchard just north of the city. No one's tended it since the blight affected the trees there. Combat training camp is over that way. Here, right? Where are the entrance? There it is. The barrel. Use it on the rotten apple piles. Use that on the apple press. Whoa, custom animation. Crazy. Barrel full of crushed rotten apples. Use a barrel of naphtha on the apple barrel. Naphtha apple mix. And use your sieve on it to obtain a barrel of toxic. Sift the solid out of the mixture. Use it on a range. Back in a west yard one. I think it's faster for me to warp at this point. Evaporate the fluid and you're left with some powdery residue. Gross. Okay. Use it on two of the rain sacks in West Arduin. General store in the southwest corner of the church or inside the office north of the man hall. That would be a pretty reasonable quest on the whole. Probably me for Morning's End 2, which is less reasonable, my understanding. Use it to contaminate the supply points. Hey, dude. 
did your shit for you. How's the epidemic going? Oh, you mean the poisoning? Settles a brick. Yep, how's that going? It's all done. Good a few days, the slate pens will be full again. Do I prove my commitment now? I guess you want to know what we're doing in the mines. A long time ago, Siren herself ordered the construction of a great temple deep beneath the earth. The temple guards a great power, one that's a key to our plans. We believe the temple lies beneath the city, that's why we're here. Progress has been slower than we'd have liked. The slaves actually mined to some old caverns infested with beasts. Close to way to finding it. Started to see signs were near. Now that you know about the temple, I have a new task you to perform deep within the mines. One of the guards has taken the key to the mines to be copied. Report him regularly, and I'll see that you get a copy as soon as he gets back. Probably report this to Ariana. What was that? Oh, nothing. To let you yeah. should probably recharge this thing. Oh, we pick up Morning's End Part 2 here. Perfect. Yo, how goes it? The information you're after, it seems that you're worth elves searching for an ancient temple of some sort deep beneath West Ardoin. It must be the Temple of Light. Built by Saren herself to guard a dark and ancient power. This is not good. Your Lord Yorworth intends to use that power to summon the Dark Lord. They haven't found the temple yet, but they know it's down there. We still have time. Thank you for your help so far. I never would have discovered this without you. Let's prepare for what comes next. 25,000 hit points XP. <laughs> Nowhere near enough for 74. But it gave us about halfway, a little over halfway to 66 thieving. That's cool. What are you going to do about the Temple of Light? Now how close your Earth Elves are to finding it. Turn to the Warmer Headquarters and gain access to their mine. Start part two, sure. I'm not going to do it, but get past the point where... wants me to do something else. Forty-three prayer, seventy agility for lesser chance of failing obstacles. It's gonna be there's a part where we because we're on a kind of sort of Iron Man account. We need to woof. You need to collect fifty junk items that are randomly determined, some of which might be really hard to get, and turn them in to get a death talisman. Yikes. Go and stop the mourners from excavating under West Arduin. Okay. Maybe that's as good as we're gonna get for now. And this quest list is starting to look pretty light. Taste of Hope, Song of the Elves, Monkey Madness 2, Morning's End 2, Making Friends with My Arm, Grim Tales, Dramatic Exiles, Dragon Slayer 2, Dream Mentor, Devious Minds. Yikes. Alright. Thanks, folks. I think we're going to wrap a little early this time. I think we started early, so it's fine. Um, next episode, I honestly don't know what quest we're going to do. I don't think I'm going to get to 72 mining quickly enough to making it to make it to making friends with my arm. So we could try Dream Mentor, but that's supposed to be really hard. Yeah, the three quests that we have open: <laughs> Morning's End Two is really hard, Dream Mentor is really hard, Taste of Hope is really hard. It's the final stretch. Devious Mines is apparently not too hard. That's 65 smithing. So maybe I can see what I can do with the ore we just got, how much XP that gets us. My guess is it's going to get us maybe to 61. Not quite to 65. Yikes. Well, other stuff. Uh, there's going to be more Motherload Mining, which is all fast forwarded. Uh, we got that Dust Devil Slayer task that I'm excited to do, but I'm kind of Gonna try to put that off until we get closer to actually being able to do Monkey Madness 2. Might be one of the... I think the last three quests we're gonna do are gonna be Monkey Madness 2, Dragon Slayer 2, Song of the Elves. Probably in that order. Yeah. I'll try to do everything else in the meantime. 
I guess we could try to burn up to 65 crafting to do Fermentic Exiles, because that gets us like 15,000 Slayer XP, which would not be bad. But it's... It's rough. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next episode. Bye.